Hello submarine friends. You can see I've been pretty busy working on my dual deep worker. So to date what I've got done is I have the ballast tanks mounted to the chassis now. It is only mounted to the chassis for two reasons. One, I don't want to weld any tabs or do any welding on the main hull because that creates a whole bunch of new testing. So I'm leaving the main hull intact as it was built. So these tanks are mounted strictly to the chassis. And there's a second reason for that. The deep worker, or this dual deep worker, is actually two deep workers, hull three and four, that were married together to make the dual deep worker. So the, the deep workers are built with a feature where they can be released from the chassis. For some reason, they didn't do that with this sub. So everything is in place for the chassis to be jettisoned. It just has to be activated. So the problem is, is the high pressure air tank and the oxygen tank are connected to the chassis. So I have to do some reworking to remount those tanks so that when the occupant spheres are jettisoned from the chassis, those tanks come with it because they have to be part of that system. So each one of these tanks has about 900 pounds of buoyancy. So that gives me about 12 inches of freeboard. And when I say freeboard, I mean freeboard from the, from the bottom of the domes. So getting in and out of the sub and even in small waves will be no problem at all. Another thing I did, I don't want to affect the balance of the original submarine. So these tanks are neutrally buoyant because each one has seven trawl floats inside. Each trawl float supports 18 and a half pounds, which makes the tanks almost neutral. So another thing that I've done, which I do from now on, on any submarine that I own, I don't care how deep it dives, my submarines are going to be equipped with this, and that is a recovery line. This is a spool of 500 feet right here. So the line is half inch uh, braided nylon, and it can lift 3,700 pounds. So these two floats, I could use one float, but I use two because I'm trying to compensate for the weight of this, this whole system. Again, trying to keep the submarine as original as possible in terms of weight and balance. So these two floats offset that weight. Plus with two floats, I'm ensured that the rope will be towed to the surface because this rope is not buoyant. It's very, very close to being buoyant, but it's not buoyant. So you can see that the aft thrusters are also mounted. They're not uh, fully welded yet. I don't want to get too carried away welding things this close to the uh, hull. I don't want to damage any penetrators or anything. So everything's just tacked together. Same with this, it's all just tacked. So now I will re remove these tanks. And I should mention, everything is mounted to the tanks and nothing is mounted to the occupant sphere. So when I remove this, all of this assembly comes with it. So I'll take it off and then I'll weld it up outside. No chance of sparks and damage. Well, so now that I have these tanks done, motors mounted, blah, 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 I can move on to the fun stuff. This is the part that I've been looking forward to. This stuff here to me is just fabricating labor it's not particularly fun and it's not particularly exciting, but working on the, the deep worker part, that's really fun. So the first thing I'm going to do is take everything out of the submarine just to make sure that there's no weirdness going on that's going to surprise me later. I'll take every nut and bolt apart, make sure everything's tight, greased and in good condition. So one of the things that I have to do is I have to move this valve right here. This valve controls the air supply to the soft ballast tank up front. And that soft ballast tank is very critical to all this. So I have to keep it. So I'm moving all the control from the back sphere to the front. And the reason for that is the view from the front is spectacular. The view from the back is not so great. So I bought the sub, uh, I paid for it. Uh, I'm the pilot, so I get the good view. What can I tell you? So everything has to be moved from the back to the front, which is really not that problem or not that big a problem because everything is identical because both hulls are identical. Like everything will literally bolt into the front. I do have to change airlines and some things like that because obviously they won't reach the front. But again, I have to move those air tanks and oxygen tanks anyways. So I'm gonna figure that out once I get these tanks off and get it stripped down, then I'll make some decisions on how I can do that. I may wait until the winter to make the occupant spheres jettisoning because that, that could be a big job. So that's where I'm at so far. Ciao for now.